she has just stunned the world. India Lee is going to win the first ever T100, and it starts here at Homestead Miami Speedway. She'll walk across and grab the banner. India Lee wins T100. Indy Lee, no one knew who you were yesterday. Now everyone in the triathlon world knows you. That's a bit disrespectful. It's a bit of a joke. But does it feel like that for you? Does it feel like you were in obscurity and now people know who you are and care about who you are? Uh, yeah, it does. I don't know if they care about who I am yet. So they probably know my name a bit better. And, and we were just chatting. Uh, you didn't sleep much last night. How come? Uh, uh, partly... Because of the amount of caffeine I had during the race, it was a late race, a lot of caffeine, and also because I was responding to messages from friends and family and the time difference back home, they were just waking up as I was going to sleep, so I wanted to chat with them. What's it like? I want to, I want to talk about the race in more detail, but after you win a T100 race that no one expected you to win, like, yeah, you know, did you, did, firstly, did you expect yourself to win it? No, I didn't. I, I didn't expect to win it. I didn't think I couldn't win it, but I wasn't expecting to win it. Like absolutely no way. My uh, my coach had a lot of confidence in me. It, as it turns out, he he predicted what I would do in the race almost to the number, which is encouraging. <laughs> so. He obviously knew I had that performance in me and having people around me who have that confidence in me has given me a boost. So, yeah, didn't expect it. And so when you win it, when you cross the line, from then to when you can't sleep at 3 a.m. in your bed, what's that like? Right? Take the average person inside that. Uh, to be honest, I feel, like, pretty numb. Like, I don't... It's quite overwhelming, I'm not used to a lot of attention and I don't crave a lot of attention and I got quite a lot of attention yesterday. So <laughs> dealing with that has been overwhelming. When did you know you'd won? Maybe with a lap to go, I knew that I wasn't going to fall apart and I heard over the announcer on course that I had a 30 second gap or something. Like I was trying to work out in my head that if I carried on running the pace I was running, then Lucy would have to run quite a bit quicker to catch me. So don't do anything silly and just keep on doing what I was doing. What's it like coming off the bike with Lucy Charles Barclay, the reigning Ironman world champion, one of one of the best to ever do it, uh, and a fellow Brit? What's that like? What's going through your head? It was pretty cool. I mean, Lucy's the biggest name in our sport. I've watched her win many races. Uh, I'm, in, I'm inspired to be a better athlete through her performances. So to get off the re off the bike with her, I thought, like, wow, what an opportunity to just race her, I guess. And then I saw her head off up the road and I thought, oh, well, that, yeah, that was cool. Thanks for that. <laughs> well, what's it like when she gets 15 seconds on you in the matter of a, a kilometre out of T2? What, what are, you, are you, are days done? I thought, well, like, second's really great. Like, <laughs> that would be a really good day out. And it wasn't that I wasn't fighting. It was more trying to tell myself to concentrate on myself and ignore everybody around me. And then did you, when did you first get a sense that, oh, hang on, I'm in this race again? It was, I think, the second lap we came round and I could see that she, had, she didn't get further away from me on that lap. And, yeah, I was just step by step, I was getting closer and closer. But I was also telling myself, don't get too excited. Don't pick up my pace from what I'm doing because what I'm doing is catching Lucy. What happened when you went around, Lucy? Jan Fredino was in commentary and he made the comment that you went around quite aggressively and assertively. What, what happened from your point of view? In my head, it was trying to be assertive because I know that Lucy is so competitive and such a good racer that if I went past and settled down then she's got it in her just to tuck in and sit on me and I think that probably would have messed with my head and maybe been a harder way of racing than just going past and trying to put in 
I put in a hundred steps of effort because I'm always counting my steps. It's just like, yeah, it's just what I end up doing. If I'm feeling good, I just start counting in my head to a hundred. And um, so I thought I'd count to a hundred with like solid effort and then settle back into the pace that I'd been doing. So I did that and I didn't look behind me the whole race until 400 metres to go, I guess. And I just hoped that that would be enough. So could you hear, could, even if you didn't look back, could you get a sense of, because what you said there is really insightful because what happened from our point of view was you went around her, you attacked, you got 15, 20 metres. She then, that probably lasted for about 30 seconds. She slowly worked her way back right up onto your shoulder and then through the next aid station, you pulled back away. So you didn't realise that you broke her, she got back and then you broke her again? No, no clue. I used the aid stations to try and get a gauge of how far behind me she was so yeah i guess i just i missed that <laughs> so yeah that's crazy to me no one was talking about you before this race as a chance to win it i there was talk about you being someone who could you know have a good performance and was underrated but you weren't being talked about the same way lucy charles barclay was being talked about as she should win this race she's the favorite to win this race do you like being the underdog or do you prefer where you might be now as someone who's talked about to win a race? No, I definitely prefer being the underdog out of the spotlight. I'm quite quiet and reserved in like everyday life. I'm pretty shy. So I like being in the shadows, I guess, and just keeping myself to myself and getting on with what I'm doing. And, uh, yeah, so being in this situation is, yeah, pretty tricky. <laughs> so we've just learned a fun fact. You count to 100 when you run on repeat. Outside of your results, what's another Indy Lee fun fact? Oh, gosh. Not uh, a boring one, a real fun one. I'm really good at fixing stuff. Like, it's a, it's a weird talent. Like, partly comes from being annoyed as stuff doesn't work with Lee. I could fix the toilet. I could fix, like... A light that doesn't work, anything. And so do you figure it out yourself or is it like you're just really good at YouTubing things and oh, then no, learning mate. from no, YouTube? No, 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 Figure it out myself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, proper Brit. We went into this season and we had the big four. We had Lucy Charles Barclay, Annie Haug, Ashley Gentle and Taylor Nib. And if any of those four were going to be at a T100 start line, they were going to win it. Do you think that Indy Lee is a name that's now in there and it's a big five? Uh, no, I think that's getting ahead of ourselves a bit like it's March it's the first race of the year it's uh ha- the, I've got a healthy dose of perspective that everybody's coming into this race off the winter um everyone's in different positions no one's well no one's peaking for a race in March so yes yesterday was a great performance for me and I'm really proud of it because I also didn't know where I was at and how my winter had gone but it's a long season and yeah I don't I don't think I deserve to be in that company (laughs) do you dare to dream though do you do you think that it's time to start thinking maybe I can win more of these T100 races Yesterday definitely gave me a lot of confidence that I am capable of putting together a strong overall performance. So, of course, I can dream it, but it doesn't mean that I'm good enough to do it. Well, Singapore next, you're going to be there. Uh, Are you going to do all eight races? How many are you going to miss? Which ones are you going to miss? I'm going to do most of the races. At the moment, it's looking like I'm going to miss San Francisco just because of the travel involved. And I'm going to, so I'm doing Singapore next, and then I need some time to train. Otherwise, I'm going to tail off pretty quick towards the end of the season. Well, can't wait. You're good in the heat. You've just started taking more caffeine, so that's why you've won the race. Uh, yeah, can't wait to see you there at Singapore, Indy Lee, champion. Thank you. Thanks, Jack.